You already saw the title. In today's video, we're going to be putting Supermoto wheels on the 300L. This is going to take a little bit more effort than I had expected. These were actually the Supermoto wheels off of Boomhauer's 250L. And yes, as far as I'm aware, the 250L wheels will fit. We'll find out here in a bit. If you have any tips, let me know, but these things are pretty rough. So the front one ended up turning out really good, but the rear is pretty rough. Honestly, it needs redone, but still look good on camera, so that's all that matters. Got a little trick for you for this front axle since Honda doesn't include a 14 mil Allen in the tool kit. Just use you a bolt with two nuts on it. Fits perfect, break it loose that way. All right, scratch that, I broke the bolt. So I went ahead and spent $40 on a kit because I couldn't find a single 14 millimeter Allen. Honda, what the hell? They should have had one in the tool kit. Very disappointing. Well, that escalated quickly. Long story short, guys, the front axle is larger on the 300L than the 250L. I could custom order some bearings and have some spacers machined, but we ain't got time for that. Thankfully, we got a parts bike over there. Sorry, Lex. So what we're gonna do is take the forks off the 250L, throw them on the 300L so we can supermoto it. For every problem, there's a solution. Sometimes not the best, but it'll do.
Well, here it is, guys. First ride on the CRF 300L Supermoto. I've got to say, this thing is beautiful. I wasn't sure about the white at first, but it just ties everything together, and it looks great. But other than looks, how is this thing going to ride? I honestly have no idea what to expect. It's been a long time since I've been on a Supermoto, and I'm curious to see what I will prefer on the street better. I've never minded the 1821 on the street. I'm not out here doing Moto GP, Dragon Knee. So that's really what this wheel setup is for, is if you're going to go to the track, ride a lot of twisties. For me, I like the dual sports, so I'm sure I'm going to miss the off-road aspect of the 1821. But this is my first test of the 300L and Supermoto trim. All right, right off the bat, it is definitely smoother. And that's something I would expect with uh, getting rid of the knobbies. Roads are wet, by the way. Great time to do this. Oh, watch out, squirrel! Oh, he almost ate it. Dude, this thing is the small game destroyer. First Peter, now Alvin. Who's next? But what's the first thing you got to test on a Supermoto? I mean, come on. Ooh! Ooh, right off the bat, man, I missed the skinnies. For me, I have way more control with the skinnier tire setup. That'll take some getting used to. There we go. All right, we got some dry roads here. Get all the crap off these tires that have been sitting for so long. Do a little top speed run with the Supermoto setup. Oh yes, 80 miles an hour, 82, so significantly faster. I'm not sure how much the speedometer is going to be off with the smaller wheels though. I guess we could pull the phone out later and see how far off it is. Yeah, that's the nice thing about having hazards, man. Just pull over wherever you want. We got the speedometer app out. All right, right now the GPS says we're at 62, around 63, and the speedometer says 70, so we're way off. 64 on the GPS, 69 on the 300L. So I'd say we're about five to six miles an hour off. Not terrible, but I definitely wasn't doing 80 back there. Close. I also noticed there was a lot of drag on the rear wheel bearing when I was installing these. I popped the dust cover off and the grease still looked good, so I'm not sure what's up with that. I just cleaned everything that I could, so hopefully these things don't lock up on me. That would be a bad video. There we go. Cruising. Cruising, man. Oh yeah, it's so smooth. seeing that white wall in the air man Woo! by white wall i mean white wheel you can't say that this isn't a beautiful bike though like it looks so good and yeah it's definitely way better on the street for sure i expected that but we have just confirmed it so if you're going to spend most of the time on the street you might as well just set aside the money these things are really expensive i happened to get the homie deal through boomhauer and these are kind of clapped out to be honest they really do need recoded but if you're wanting to buy a set of these new, they are not cheap. I just went to look in my mirror and all I could see was the ground. So I've always kind of been on the fence about supermotos and I'll do a video about that in the future. But like I said, if this is mainly what you're gonna do, just play around on the streets and occasionally go off road at some suburban spots, then you can get away with it with this setup. I mean, you're gonna have way better street performance and you still can get away with doing some light off-roading. You add a 60-40 dual sport tire or however aggressive you want to go on this 17-inch setup, and then you have a fun little hooligan machine. Woo, them skies are looking rough up there. I don't want to get caught in that. I also noticed that it's harder to pull up the wheelie, so I don't know whether that's because my wheel bearing's shot in the rear or just the added weight. These things are heavy, so I'd imagine it has a lot to do with the weight. Cruising down the block. And my 300L Sumo. 
Dude, I'm probably the first guy to be out here doing this on a 300L Supermoto. You better hit that thumbs up button. Because it wasn't as easy as I thought. <laughs> Having to swap over the forks and ended up being like a half day project. Plus I spent a lot of time cleaning up a lot of the stuff on the 250L. But I was hoping to throw these things on in an hour and go out riding yesterday. But then the rain came and spoiled the plans, man. See that sign? Supermoto friendly. We got them twisties. Yeah, man. I am not experienced in the twisties, so you can go ahead and roast me in the comments, but I am not gonna get out of my comfort zone, especially in a t-shirt. I'll be looking like a damn raw Italian sausage. Drag some knee, boys. Nice gravel in the corner. Looks like somebody put it there. Gotta stop for a photo op. <clears throat> God, this thing looks good. They say looks aren't everything. I don't know. I want to see how hot my wheel bearing is getting in the rear. That wheel bearing right there is toasty. Looks like we'll be getting new bearings for these. Hopefully I can make it through a ride. Fronts are ice cold. It looks like we're definitely going to have to get that rear wheel bearing replaced. Oh, there we go. Attacking those corners. <laughs> That's fun. Definitely wouldn't want to do that on the stock setup. Yeah, this thing would be a blast down at the tail of the dragon or any of those roads in Tennessee for that matter. So we'll have to do a trip soon. A little swerve action on the sumo. See, I could bend this whole corner on the skinnies. There's definitely less vibration too. Everything about this setup is just smooth. And here's the thing, is it doesn't take a lot of effort to do. And once you've done it once and have all the kinks figured out, like you gotta trim the front fork guards. Shout out to my boy Daddy Longneck. He had his set from his 250L, so I swapped those on there. If you don't do that, the tires will rub like bad. You gotta watch your front brake line too, cause that'll rub, so you gotta relocate that. A couple little things you have to do, it's not directly plug and play. Since I have the factory size sprocket, that 40 tooth in the rear, I don't have to adjust the chain or anything. So I literally think I could do this swap in like 10 minutes. Now that I have that 14 millimeter Allen for the front axle, Man, that drives me nuts. But now I have the 250L front axle and forks. I think it's a 17 millimeter nut. I don't know why they changed that, man. That's just Honda being Honda. They probably just want the poor uh, suburban dad to come service his bike at the dealership. So they slapped you with a 14 millimeter Allen. So you look at it and you're like, what the hell? I didn't have one that big. So I had to go to AutoZone and they didn't sell them individually. So I went to Ace, they didn't have anything close. So I ended up having to bite the bullet and get like an eight pack for $40 just to get the front axle off. 
But why Honda doesn't include that in the toolkit is absolutely ridiculous. Like, what are you supposed to do if you pop a tube? You ain't changing it on there. That's just stupid. Dude, this thing is fun, man. I'm having a blast. And I have way more confidence, even on these wet roads, than I would with a stock setup, for sure. Now, the other argument is you can get a more street-oriented tire for the 18 to 21. And that's good and all, but you just don't have the sidewall. You don't have the meat to back it up. So, I don't know. So far, I'm having fun. I would way rather use this setup on the road. But as you know, these are for the 250. So, it looks like we're going to have to pick up a set. Warp 9, hook your boy up. So, let me know what color combo you think that I should go with. I don't know guys, I'm digging the white. I really am. I actually have a shortened kickstand I'll throw on there. I didn't think I would need it with how much the bike leans in the stock form, but it looks like I need it. But what do you guys think? What color combo should I go with the new set of wheels? I really like the white with this bike. Yes, they're harder to keep clean. Obviously they're disgusting, but I think it would be worth it. And for how much I'd be taking them on and off, they're a lot easier to clean when they're off. So I don't think it'd be that big a deal. The white CRF, the white 300, the white front headlight to the side panels, it just ties everything together. And I don't think black would do that. I don't think I'd want the bronze or the gold or whatever it is. I don't know. Blue would look pretty good, but I like neutral colors. I like universal colors. So I think the white is a winner. Let's make sure everything's good here. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, we're chewing into our front brake line already. That's whack. Thankfully, there's like an outer sleeve, but yeah. Gotta watch that. Looks like when I'm coming down off my wheelies, it was smacking that. I'd like to get a steel braided line in the front and shorten it a little bit because this thing is annoying. Other than that, man, what do I have to say about the Supermoto setup? It's fun. It's a lot of fun on the streets. Dude, I think I got like four inches to go till I reach the side. They're pretty flat from the guy who had it before me too. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. I didn't think I would enjoy it this much, really. I didn't think it'd be that big of a difference, but it really is. And I was just kind of on the fence because I thought it would take a lot longer to throw these on there. But even with everything that I had to do, if I didn't spend all that time cleaning, I could have done it in like an hour. So now that I got everything dialed in, for the most part, it should literally take 10 minutes. So maybe we'll do a video about that in the future, how long it actually takes to set this thing up. Leave your comments down below. I'm thinking 10 minutes or less. My buddy Daniel has a KTM 350 and it takes him about like 30 plus minutes but I think he changes um, the gearing. That's the thing is I have the factory 42 so if you had a different sprocket you might have to run a different chain and that can add a lot more time. I don't think I would change the gearing. I like it as is. I wouldn't want to go any taller and this being a dual sport it comes with tall gearing. Off road would it be nice? Yes um, but so far I've been riding this thing in true dual sport fashion. You know we went lower on the 250L but with a little extra power I think it makes up for it. Let's see how hot that bearing is again. Not bad. Just waiting on that rain to come. Holy crap. We almost got dive bomb. Oh, there she goes. Woo, she's having a good day, man. I'm having a better day. This thing is awesome. I love it. So much more streetable. Rotor's still getting pretty hot. Go till she glows, I guess. Well, we will have to figure that out. So, final thoughts on the 300L Supermoto. I think it rips. I think it's a lot of fun. I don't desire any more power, especially if you live near curvy roads. You're not going to need more power. You're just not. And compared to the 450L or the 450RL, there's just a lot more headache that comes with that high-performance bike. To make it run the way it should, you're going to have to do a Vortex ECU, 
full exhaust system and it's a lot more expensive on that bike than it will be to do to this. The exhaust will still be expensive but you can get away with doing the electronic jet kit with this bike and it runs just fine. This is a much more streetable engine. I mean this is straight out of their street bikes the CB300 F's and R so it really shines in this setup. Sumo bros with the tiny peckers will say that it's heavy. It's underpowered. Yeah compared to a KTM 500 or the 450s sure but you got to realize what you're getting and what you're going to be doing with it so unless you're out here trying to set world records and drag as much knee as possible i think it's a sweet setup i enjoy it looks so much better without that whale tail on there but let me know if you enjoy it as a supermoto or you'd rather me go back to the dual sport setup i mean it's so easy to change over that i'll probably be switching back and forth and it looks like i'm gonna have to drop some money on some warp nines but that's gonna end today's video guys i hope you all enjoyed but if you're new and you want to join the family be sure to subscribe we upload a bunch of content here on the channel a lot of 300l stuff coming a little bit of everything here at adventure daily if you're a true legend hit those post notifications so you don't miss out drop a like if you enjoyed it really helps out these videos and promotes them to more people i'm probably gonna head back before i get rained on and until the next video we'll see you then no oh, gobble 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 hey we got a turkey <laughs>